Welcome to Sustainable Sailing and we begin this video with these beautiful Fife One Design classes and one Menai Strait One Design class that are all on the beach at Gallows Point being scrubbed ready for their regatta at the beginning of August. These are absolutely beautiful boats dating back mostly to the 1930s and they are a really good example of sustainable sailing. They're out every Wednesday and Saturday enjoying close racing in these challenging waters. In this video we are doing work on our mizzen mast again and we are focused on the antennas and the wiring to support them. So we have an AIS antenna going on the top of the mast and a Wi-Fi booster antenna going about halfway up. These will work with the antennas that we will end up with on the main mast to boost the mobile phone signal and for VHF. So let's look at what we've got to install or have installed. Over here is our super duper AIS aerial which comes from Digital Yacht. It's there top of the range aerial because we want to make sure we get a really good range on our AIS. That is a one and a quarter inch mount which is I guess not the normal one it's a bit heavier duty and this is the head of the mizzen mast which slots in like that into the end of the mast. When you look at this mounting it has three bolt holes and I had hoped that they would straddle the outside of these two supports but in fact they were just a few millimeters too tight so that bolts wouldn't fit all the way through. I also had a huge problem because getting the hole through here that the cable would go through you can see there I made this hole in the bottom here but I couldn't get the two to line up properly and so my solution in the end has been to add these two layers of FR4. This is bolted to the first layer and then both layers are bolted to the mast head and between them they provide the angle so that the, the end of the cable can go through there and into the socket. We've got a pre-made 10 meter cable from Digital Yacht which hopefully means the connectors are really reliable but they are large to get through things. What I have fitted you can just see at the bottom there is a 34 millimeter cheap uh, plastic plumbing pipe. Three sections of it through the mast uh, at each joint I've simply tied them together and covered it with gaffer tape and then with the mast this way up so that the uh, pipe is resting on the bottom it's the front of the mast but it's held down by gravity I then riveted it along all the way this was my first use really of doing riveting this is the riveting gun that I had bought and with that I am using 6.4 millimeter monal rivets which are supposed to not cause corrosion in aluminium or stainless steel. They were bigger than I really needed but they are the only monal ones I've got. This cable coming out of the tube at the top of the mast will have some heat shrink both where it's going to go through that hole in the head of the mast and then also just where it's going to disappear into the ducting and where that is I'm going to zip tie a, a bit of FR4 to it so that that acts as strain relief. So the FR4 resting on the top of the tube takes the weight and this connector isn't taking any weight through onto the fitting. The bolts are, look a little bit weird, I had to do 
this one kind of upside down so a countersunk head because of the way that they hit the sides of the top of the mast. They're all finished except for I want to paint the FR4 and I need to put dialectic grease on all the bolts where they come through this aluminium. At the moment we only ever had two shrouds coming through the top of this even though there are four positions. This was used for the topping lift and one for the main halyard and one for the staysail halyard. What I'm wondering, can I take from the topping lift block, which will be a replacement for this, and go into the sheave here and down the mast from that articulation? Or do I need to keep it as an external topping lift? I know that if I do go internal, I will have to make some changes here because currently there are only two sheave holes in the mast for lines to come out. The second antenna we fitted is the Wi-Fi Boost one from Digital Yacht again. This is again a one and a quarter inch mount so they sell this adapter here which the one and a quarter screws to and then it fits onto a one inch mount and we've bought the 60 centimeter offset from them which I have riveted on and I've put this rubber which will be trimmed to provide insulation between the stainless steel and the aluminium mast. I'll just turn the mast over and I can show you where that cable goes. Okay here's the Wi-Fi boost aerial a little bit of heat shrink needs to be fitted there and where it disappears into the mast so it's going through the aluminium into the conduit and I'm going to use a zip tie to hold this to this metal for the strain relief and make sure that there's a little bit of rubber as well as the heat shrink so that it doesn't wear through on the aluminium. I have rounded that hole so it is smooth and here you can see some of the rivets holding the plastic pipe to the mast. At the bottom of the mast I have the holes ready for the wires to come out. I'm not doing that until I've finished with both that, the middle and the forward end because I do need to be able to move the cables easily up and down a bit. I've got grommets that will fit on these holes and again where the wires come through these I will put heat shrink on them. You can possibly just about see the cable duct which ends about here and there's the last rivet. These are one piece cables, 10 metre cables that will lead directly through the deck to the devices. The AIS cable is going to the top of the mast and so has the least length to go to the AIS box via that BNC connector, whereas the Wi-Fi one, because it only goes halfway out the mast, has a lot longer length. I've still got to sort out the deck lands for these that are going to be large enough for the connector to be able to go through and yet be able to grip the cable. So again, I'll probably put a bit of heat shrink on just to make the cable a little bit thicker where it goes through the deck land to give a nice tight fit. Where these cables then run below decks will have to be in really good ducting because any time we take the mast off, we've got to bring these back onto deck because there's no break. We have to disconnect them from the boxes bring them onto the deck and then we can take the mast down. We've decided not to fit any other electrics on the mizzen mast. Originally there was a radar system, we're not going to have a radar at the moment, we're investing in the best AIS we can get instead of that. And the way that we're planning for this to work with the main mast here is to give us four different types of antenna but have them all at different heights. 
So the Wi-Fi boost will be the lowest one. That should give us about four to six mile range. Next up, we'll be on the main mast at the spreaders and will be two antennas to extend the mobile phone signal, LTE signal. They'll be a little bit higher than the Wi-Fi boost. Then it'll be the antenna tuned for AIS and then at the top of the main mast will be the antenna tuned for VHF. By having separate AIS and VHF antennas plus a splitter, we will be able to run in three different configurations. If things are all working, then they have dedicated antennas for AIS and for VHF. If either antenna or cable fails, we can put them both onto the remaining antenna and use the splitter. So that gives us a lot of redundancy. The challenge with the main mast is going to be that the tube that's fixed in the mast already, it's a metal tube, doesn't seem like it's going to be big enough for all the cables we need to run. So we've obviously got those three antenna cables, two coming to the spreaders, one to the top of the mast. We also need deck lights, steaming light, and we've got a combination light for the top of the mast. So it's one cable and the LED light has an all round white and it has a trickler, but only needs one thin cable. I'm therefore thinking that we will probably end up running an extra duct just as far as the spreaders and rivet that in and use that for the mobile phone antennas. It's taken ages to get this far and partly I was focusing on doing this because I was waiting for the router that I'd ordered to come in order to finish making the tanks. Unfortunately the person I bought it from had apparently been in hospital for a couple of weeks after I bought it and it arrived yesterday. Over the next couple of weeks I will be able to make the tanks and then we'll be able to finish the actual rigging and get the mizzen mast up. As I say, I've got very detailed videos on every step of doing this riveting and making this, but they were looking really long and a lot of those videos was me saying, I'm going to do this and then, oh, it won't work. I've got to do something else. Therefore, I decided just a quick summary video to show you how we're going uh, about this. There are other changes we're going to make to the mizzen eventually. We will eventually put self-tailing winches. We will eventually change the cleats for clutches, but all of that can wait. I hope that's helpful. We do think that the uh, getting this done well is key part of being sustainable. Partly it's because to be sustainable means for us being able to live on anchor and so the communication stuff so the wi-fi boost the mobile phone boost are really important to enable that to happen and then in terms of safety which is quite critical to being able to spend your time sailing in a sustainable way we think that ais is really important and so investing in a high quality aerial and high quality cable right from the beginning seems to be a very sensible way rather than trying to save a little bit of money and go for something that won't have the range and won't have the same reliability. Lots still to do but hopefully that is a quick update and helpful if you're considering these antennas. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like subscribe and comment. We really do appreciate all the helpful comments that we've been getting. Thanks for watching. Bye.